Okay, perfect. We can go ahead and get started. Okay, so welcome, you guys. So I am your host, Donye Taylor. I am the Director of Creative Initiatives here at Four. So what that means is that I act as an advocate for creators on the platform. Um, I am a creator myself, so I'm able to offer a really unique perspective as it relates to the creative economy. I also assist in spearheading and leading innovative conversations surrounding the creator economy, just like this one. And I work with multiple departments and I provide strategic insight with the creator in mind. So about four. So I know there's a bunch of people in this meeting right now. So I just wanna do a quick temperature check. So if you are familiar with four, drop a one in the chat. If you are not familiar with four, drop a two. Okay, I'm seeing some ones. Okay, I see one-ish, two-ish. Okay, so we have a pretty good mix of people in here. To all the twos, welcome. You're in for a really good treat. Um, Four is a really unique company, and I'm going to talk about that right now. So if you put two, then I want to introduce to you what Four is. Four is an ambassador marketing company, and it has two sides of the company to it. So on one side, we have the product and the technology, and brands are able to use our custom-built technology and products in order to fill their influencer marketing campaigns. Influencers can also sign up to our platform for free to get access to detailed analytics as it relates to their influence, and they're able to get put on the radar for potential campaigns from brands. So if you're an influencer in here and you're looking to get to the bag this year, definitely sign up to be a part of Four. Um, it's an amazing opportunity. On the other side, Four also acts as an influencer marketing agency. So if you are a brand and you're looking to run some dope influencer marketing cam campaigns this year, definitely want to check out our agency side. We have an extremely dynamic and robust team of marketers, content girls, and strate strategic thinkers who all have one goal in mind, which is to generate the ROI of your dreams. So just to kind of round up everything and to tell you guys why we are here. Number one, it's Black History Month and the cultural impact of Black creators, without a doubt, is just not questionable. And even though a lot of brands are focused more on investing in Black talent more than ever, a lot of them are still getting it wrong. So after watching this webinar, you will gain the insights and knowledge that will focus on how to get it right. So a little bit about our approach to this webinar, we really wanted to hear from the Black creators in our community in order to figure out what it is that they are experiencing on their end as a Black creator in order to teach you guys how to appease to them, not just during Black History Month, but for the entire year. So one of the questions that we asked is, how do you want brands to approach you as it relates to potential campaigns and partnerships? We also asked them what are some red flags that they've encountered, um, and we also asked them what would they tell brands that are looking to responsibly and effectively work with Black creators year-round. And the last one is, if a brand reaches out to approach them, but they're not aware of who that brand is, we want to know what goes into their decision to accept or decline. So over to the right, you can see how all of these creators answered. 40% of them talked about reevaluating compensation and premium pricing. 30% they don't want a cultural moment or month. 15% want to make sure that diversity and inclusion is an in internal priority and value. And 15% want to offer creative freedom and ownership. So throughout the, West, the rest of this webinar, we will be breaking down each one of these little pie chunks and putting them into actionable items that will teach you all how to do this within your internal companies. So first up, how to go beyond a cultural moment or a month. So when it comes to partnering with Black creators, you want to make sure that you're focusing on long-term relationships and building a network. It's important to know that there is a really big difference between a regular year-round partnerships and partnerships that are centered around their diversity or their Blackness. If you want to ask yourself these questions, like how much impact 
do you really want to make? Are you doing these campaigns for your brand sakes? Or are you doing it for the creator's opportunity? Also ask yourself, are you trying to shake things up or are you simply just checking an item off of your diversity and inclusion to-do list? Another thing that you wanna make sure to do is to plan ahead as best as you can. And if you work in the influencer marketing industry, which I'm sure you guys do because you're on this webinar call, then you know that timelines can get a little bit tricky, but it is in your best and plan ahead at least six weeks before your content goes live using this timeline. Now, this timeline is, you guys can use this as a guide or you can use it verbatim, but this timeline it will help you appease to black creators because this will prevent you from looking like a brand that just wants to get content from them and turn it around super quick. If you're a brand that's asking creators to turn around content in the rent, that could be a huge red flag for them because it, to them it's going to make it seem like you're just rushing them and you're just checking something off of your to-do list instead of actually valuing the content that that it is that they create so you want to allow for at least two weeks for negotiating and contracting at least one week for product shipping if you do have a product you want to give the creator two weeks to try the content and you want to give them about for content review and edits for the content to go live. So over on the right, you can see this graph that we came up with that basically describes the correlation between the value of the content and the campaign and how long it takes to plan the campaign. These two things are directly correlated. So more than likely, the longer it takes for you to develop and strategize this campaign, the more likely it is that that content is gonna have a very high value rate. Next thing is you want to tailor your outreach. If you do reach out to a creator in February, don't just think about how you can engage with them just for that month. Think about all of the campaigns or all the goals and the initiatives that you're trying to mark off internally for that year and figure out a way to include them in them. For instance, here's an email script that we came up with best for this scenario. Hello, we are reaching out to you because we absolutely love your content and would love to include you in our upcoming Black History Month campaign. Additionally, additionally, we would like to chat with you further about some other campaigns that we have coming up. We are looking to deepen the relationships that we have with our influencers. This is a great email script because it lets the creator know that, that yes, you are an advocate for diversity and inclusion, but you also value their content so much to the point that you want to include them in other campaigns as well. This email script on the right is if you have already worked with a Black creator. So if you've already used a Black creator in one of your campaigns, but you want to work with them again, this script is great for that. This script also lets the Black creator know that you're, you weren't just interested in working with them one time, you're interested in working with them again. Also, the likelihood that the Black creator will say yes to this is really high because they've already worked with you before. The next one we wanna reach on, okay, I see Eric, he just put some question in the chat. Eric, we're gonna answer all questions at the end. So. Hold on to that. Um, the next one that we want to talk about is expanding opportunities. So when we talk about expanding opportunities, we want to look at Black creators to create an influence outside of this diversity box. So within the diversity box, you have a lot of content that's related to race, civil rights, and things like that. Equal opportunity means a fair chance regardless of race, but it also means more opportunity to participate in various initiatives such as social change, worldly view, joy, art, community, like that. Make sure you always tie ROI back to a diversity high. The second thing, I wanna offer the same opportunities for growth. So think about different types include a creator outside of just a one-off post. And so just using a photo, visual, and them to promote your brand, think their mind, their approach, their network, community, all of these things combined in order to reach the ROI that you want as a brand. 
This next one, I know everybody loves talking about money and compensation. It's a really tricky subject, so I'm really excited to dive into these next couple of slides to get you guys thinking about how you can evaluate compensation and premium pricing. So we all know that there is a multitude of factors that affect influencer rates. So usage, exclusivity, briefing sensitivity, production time, all of these things are factors that all creators have. But at the bottom, you can see that we outline some specific um, factors that go into working with Black creators. The first one is expertise and demand. Entrepreneurs and business owners in the BIPOC community are industry leaders and experts because they have such a nuanced perspective on their industries. Cultural capital is also a really big factor that goes into working with Black creators. When you work with a Black creator, your, your brand is able to increase their cultural capital and brand relevancy in relation to popular culture as a whole. The third unique factor that goes into working with a Black creator is you're able to kind of get this shift in your brand perspective and you're allowed to change how your audience perceives your products. So these three things right here, this kind of justifies the premium pricing that goes into Black creators and why when you are putting together budgets, you should have a little bit more wiggle room when you're reaching out to Black creators and the compensation that goes with them. This is so key. Exposure, exposure, exposure is not a form of comp compensation. Um, and I think that we kind of all know this, but I kind of want to dig into why it's not a form of compensation. So one of the biggest problems with offering exposure is the concept of abusing an imbalance of power. If a person or an organization offers a gig for exposure, it's with the assumption that that party holds more power. Otherwise, they would just pay for the service that they asked. This is not the case with working with Black creators. Um, it is a mutually beneficial partnership. Therefore, both parties should be treated as such. Black creators should be compensated for any of the work that they do, and exposure is not a form of that compensation. So if you are planning on capitalizing on a creator's diversity and a skill set, that will call for a higher price, as mentioned earlier. So a lot of times there will be a chance that you will reach out to a Black creator and they come back and they say, oh, like this is too, this is too small, like my rates are a little bit higher than this. This is an email prompt that can kind of get you out of that situation. So this email prompt basically outlines that you know, as a brand, you identify that you are not able to afford the creator for that specific campaign, but it also opens up the door for further negotiation for, for, for other campaigns that you may have in the future that the creator may have a different scope of work for and your budget may fit for that. So this is a really good email script because it lets the creator know that, you know, you're being upfront and you're being honest about not having the money, but the relationship does not have to end there. You're letting them know that you do want to work with them and you're willing to work with them as it relates to their rates and to find a middle ground on what works for both parties. This is one of my favorite parts of this presentation. Um, as I said earlier, I am a creative and I've worked with brands before and the brands that I really like working with are the ones that offer me creative freedom and ownership. So the next following slides are gonna show you guys how to do just that. So when reaching out to black creators, it's really important to be thoughtful about your brief and to know that the black creator knows their audience and community probably better than you do. And with that being said, they know how to speak to them. Creators don't need brands to tell them how to communicate, persuade and connect. They need thoughtful partners that's gonna allow them to do that. So some things that you can ask a creator in your brief is to say, oh, like, let me know if this is something that you would say to your audience. Doing this kind of positions you as the person on the outside and positions the creator as the expert within their niche and their audience. You can also say something like, here's what we are thinking, but let us know if you have any edits that would resonate with your audience more. This allows for more of a collaborative campaign and the creator is gonna be more excited to create because they feel like they have a voice. 
The next thing that you want to do is allow Black creators to be their authentic selves. So going back to the slide before, you want to let creators take the brief and frame it in a way that will resonate. Of course, you want to share your overarching goals as a company, but trust the influencer that you're reaching out to to bring that campaign to life in their voice and for their targeted audience. The third thing, you want to celebrate rather than censor Black culture. This means to give credit where it's due. Not only is it the morally correct thing to do, but it's something that other Black and diverse creators will notice when they consider working with your brand. The final one is to make sure that you all fully understand the values, culture, and aesthetic that goes into these campaigns and working with Black creators. And just, I know I kind of went through a lot, but I just want to do a quick temperature check. Um, how are you guys liking the information so far? Are you guys learning anything new? Um, let me know in the comments and I'll continue. Okay, Kelsey, you got a super helpful. Thank you. Okay, so we'll keep it going. Um, so, oh yeah, going back, just understanding the values and culture and aesthetic that goes into working with Black creators. So the first thing, you want to work from the inside out. If you want to partner with Black creators, you need to make sure that your internal team is diverse, including all of the strategists, the managers, directors, and consultants that will be working with them. It's essential for the people on your internal team to understand the Black experience. And Black creators will want to work with you if if your value and purpose truly align on diversity, equity, and inclusion. The second thing, check your bias. Actively follow and have conversations with and engage with Black creators, not just the creators you follow on your personal accounts. Just do an inventory check on your personal social media. Try to see outside of your normal lens. If you're scrolling your feed and you feel like you're seeing the same people over and over, challenge yourself at least once a week to try to follow a Black creator that's outside of your network. It's easy to return to the same group of influencers over and over again. So doing this will help you expand the pool and expand your network. There's a large pool of creators available outside of your algorithmic bubble. So staying in your bubble contributes to your bias in your selections or perception of the landscape as a whole. If you guys are looking to expand um, your network, definitely consider signing up to be a member of four where you can search a bunch of different Black creators um, and diverse creators as well. We also have a, a resource that's linked here and will be in a takeaway deck that you guys will get email once this is over that kind of expands more in the industry bias. Um, and Sophia, to answer your question, yes, there will be a full recording and a takeaway deck um, that will be sent once this presentation is over. The next one is promoting all types of diversity across the board. That should just be an internal value that your company has. People are, multi are multifaceted, multi-hyphenate, multicultural, and we need to address intersectionality. Hire and recruit creators that represent all races, ethnicities, religion, age, body types, language, sexual orientations, following sizes, and experience levels. Doing this makes sure that your campaigns kind of kill multiple birds with one stone and it positions your company as an innovator in the industry. This last one, I call it staging your house, but it's a metaphor to kind of describe how Black creators approach you when they are making the decision to work for your brand. So I'm pretty sure everybody here has either gone to look at an apartment or toured an apartment complex or toured a house. One of the first things that you look for when you're deciding where you want to live is how does it look and if that aesthetic matches your internal aesthetic. So when Black creators are deciding to work with brands, they have the same mindset. So as a brand, you want to make sure that the Black creators can imagine themselves living or creating as it relates to your brand. A Black creator may feel immense pressure working with you and feel like the token Black creator for the company if they don't see your brand putting in the work and the things that you guys are already doing aligning with their internal values. So that wraps up our presentation. Um, I'll spend the last five minutes 
answering some questions. I'm gonna go through, I think, let me see. Um, who had the first question? Let's see. Okay, Eric Atkinson asks, what are good resources for finding black creative talent? The first resource, number one, I would say is for his directory of resources. You can contact the sales team to figure out how to get that set up but I would definitely recommend four. There are also a bunch of different communities that you can follow on Instagram, Eric. And if you wanna chat about this further, I would, happy, I would be happy to do this with you via email. Um, the next question, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Okay. If we are looking to recruit creators to join us full-time with any of these criteria shift? I don't think any of these criteria would shift because all of these go into the same um, mindset. The one thing that Black creators look for when partnering with brands is to just make sure that the company that they are working with or working for, their values align, and that Black creator is giving the freedom in order to create at the level that they see valuable. I'm gonna go into the Q&A section. Oh, here we go, the Q&A section. Okay, anonymous attendee asks, how do black creators feel working with white planners when creating and developing campaigns? Is there a, a way to develop that relationship beyond? Yes, there is a way to do that. So one thing that you can do, and I've seen this a lot, I've gotten approached by brands with a brief um, a deck and in that deck, they don't have any photos or visuals of somebody that looks like me. One thing that you can do to kind of bypass that is make sure that the visuals and the brief kind of matches the creator that you're reaching out to. I hope this helps. I'm going to click and see if I can answer this live. Okay, never mind. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. I'm going to move down to the second one, which is from Mike. And excuse me, Mike, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, your last name wrong, Toyon. Um, Mike asks, if we work within the government, how can we better compensate black creators? Are there other ways to provide satisfying compensation or is our first job to pitch for a bu budget within our organization? I have been compensated in multiple different ways outside of just money. I have worked with a few, a few different apps. They have offered me an affiliate link so that if I promote an app to my audience and they download it and pay premium, I get a cut of that. And they've also offered me free access to the platform. So say for instance, a company like Adobe does not have the budget to pay for a creator. And I can't imagine why they wouldn't because Adobe is so big, but we're just gonna use this as an example. Adobe Creative Cloud, their subscription, that's pretty expensive. And that's probably something that a creator is gonna pay for anyway. So offering that creator free access to their platform would be a great alternative um, to a form of compensation. Okay, moving on to the next question. Um, another anonymous attendee asked, is, can you give an example of how bias happens during briefing? Um, I kind of touched on this earlier when, when I answered the previous question, but if you are only using the same, the same influencers over and over and you're using the same photos and visuals in your briefs, that can be a red flag of bias. So you wanna make sure that the briefs are as specific as possible to the influencer. It's gonna make them feel like you actually put time into reaching out to them and you did your research on who it is that they are on the internet as it relates to their influence and their audience as well. Okay, the next question is from another anonymous attendee. They said, for the email templates on reaching out to influencers, is it important to say you are wanting to work with Black creators and call out race specifically? We often reach out to a diverse set of creators overall. I would say if you are reaching out to a Black creator, I don't think that it hurts to 
put that in there. I have had brands reach out to me and say, hi, Donye, we're trying to amp up our initiatives within the Black creator community, and we think that you would be perfect because your audience is exactly who we are targeting. So I think that if you add context to the email, it will definitely make it seem like you're being intentional and specific with the campaign that you're trying to use that creator for. So I don't think it hurts to do that. The last, oh wait, no, it's some, it's some more questions coming in. Okay, the next question is from Jonathan Lee. He says, we're in a traditionally white male middle-aged market cycling where representation is sorely lacking. In recent efforts working with black creators, we've been accused of tokenism in the market. This was likely fueled by the recent social unrest. And while we remain undeterred in our mission to increase representation and equity in cycling, I'd appreciate your perspective on what we can do to make sure we are going beyond tokenism and achieving true support and collaboration with Black creatives. I feel like, number one, with cycling, that is a very specific and nuanced industry. And I would advise you to do a little bit more storytelling with Black creators. I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of Black cyclists out there that have a hard time finding community um, because it's such a specific, specific and nuanced industry. So try finding Black cyclists within your area and reaching out to them to, to try to see if you can tell their story from their perspective. I don't know anybody who doesn't want to share their story, so I think doing that is a great way to remain authentic while also taking into consideration where the Black creators or your Black audience is coming from as it relates to your industry. The next question, under what circumstances would a Black creator be more apt to work for a company that doesn't have a budget? We have a couple of attendees here to learn from NASA, and unfortunately, we do not have the budget to pay them, such as tour or access. So I kind of answered this a little bit too with the Adobe um, example, but I definitely feel like something such as NASA is, again, really specific and really nuanced. I'm not sure what your main campaign goals is, but if you have anything that is a value that other people are paying for, I would definitely think about how you can offer that for free to Black creators um, and think about how you can include them in things that they already have going on. So say if you guys are doing a press release or a campaign or NASA is getting an article in a major publication, try bringing those Black creators on to that so that they can get other exposure besides just compensation. I feel like that is a really good package to offer a Black creator while also letting them know that you have the you have the intent to pay them but the budget currently is just there so you don't want to offer just exposure you want to be able to offer other tangible things such as access to resources education um and things that they may um pay for in the future i think that is our time for now if you did have a question i didn't answer it live um make sure that you shoot me an email Donye at four dot co, D O N Y E at four dot co, and I will do my best to answer them. It was such a pleasure hosting this webinar with you all, and I really hope that you were able to leave with some valuable information. Again, if you had to leave or you came in the beginning, I mean, if you came in in the middle and you missed a couple of slides in the beginning, don't worry. This entire deck will be sent to you guys via the email that you register with. I can't wait to talk to you guys soon. And I can't wait to see all of the campaigns that you guys are able to create using the information in this presentation. All right, guys, have a good day.